One of the most fascinating aspects of, of the sort of books that I write is working in archives. I've been doing it for 30 or 40 years and I still love it. Uh, like this, the greatest of all, um, the National Archive here at Kew in Outer London. Uh, but I'm equally fascinated by um, this letter which I found in the Serbian archives in Belgrade and it's from the Cotton Powder Company Limited of Walbrook, London EC dated July the 29th 1914 to the Serbian minister and it's proposing to sell them uh, 10,000 rifle grenades uh, with lots more if they need them and the letter ends up um, if desired the same grenade may be thrown by hand for close quarter fighting for which purpose a rope tail is supplied these tails could be made and furnished at a cost of eightpence each we don't know whether the cotton powder company ever got their order but you can't accuse them on the brink of uh, the first world war of failing to promote British entrepreneurship but I think this book this document the war book, is almost my favorite of all the extraordinary documents that I studied for writing 1914. That every year from 1910 onwards, the Committee of Imperial Defense produced an updated version of the war book, which was telling every one of Britain's departments of state exactly what they were to do in the event of the outbreak of a war. Uh, censorship, that the Admiralty has told that their chief censor's telegraphic address is going to be scoured London. The Home Office is told that chief constables have got to be responsible for keeping a close eye on foreigners. The Admiralty is told that um, they've got to detain enemy shipping, they've got to cut enemy submarine cables. That um, the Colonial Office is told all the steps that have got to be taken about um, suspicious foreigners in faraway places. That every department is, is told here exactly what steps they've got to take, inch by inch and step by step. And this is exactly what came to pass on the outbreak of the First World War on August the 4th, 1914.